All right, good afternoon, uh, Madam. Uh, this morning, the Secretary General received this year's Global Sustainable Development Report from the co-chairs of the Independent Group of Scientists. The report, entitled The Future is Now, Science for Achieving Sustainable Development. The two co-chairs, Mr. Mukherjee, Chief of the Integrated Policy and Analysis Branch of the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, and Mr. Messerli, the Director for the Center for Development and Environment at the University of Bern in Switzerland, uh, will be my guest tomorrow and will brief you in more detail on the report. This afternoon at 3.15 p.m., the Secretary General will address the high-level dialogue on reaffirming the commitments to multilateralism through strengthening of the international system and institutions on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of these United Nations. Uh, his re remarks will be streamed live on the UN uh, Web TV. Uh, this morning, the Secretary General Special Representative for Afghanistan, Tadamichi Yamamoto, briefed the Security Council on the, the situation in the country. In his remarks, Mr. Yamamoto stressed that the escalation of violence in the past few weeks have shown the urgency for finding a political settlement to the long Afghan conflict. He also highlighted it can only be resolved by direct and inclusive talks between the Afghan people. It is imperative, therefore, that the direct talks between the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the Taliban commence as soon as possible, he added. Also, the executive director of the UN Office of Drugs and Crime, Mr. Yuri Fedotov, told the Council that the drug production, trafficking, and transnational organized crime situation in, the, in Afghanistan remains complex. The persistent challenges posed by illicit drugs, economic and financial crime, corruption, money laundering, and the financing of terrorism continue to undermine the stability of the country, he said. Both remarks are online. Later in the afternoon, the Council will hold a meeting on the situation in Guinea-Bissau. Um, from Ethiopia, the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mark Lowcock, has wrapped up a two-day visit to that country, calling for additional funding to support the government-led response to the displacement crisis and other humanitarian needs. Mr. Lowcock said the Ethiopia has to cope with persistent and multifaceted humanitarian problems, including drought, flooding, disease outbreaks, and inter-ethnic violence that has forced millions of people to flee their homes. He was joined uh, in his mission by the Assistant Secretary General for Peacebuilding Support, Oscar Fernandez Tarenko, and the Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights of Internally Displaced Persons, Cecilia Jimenez Damari. The three reaffirmed their commitment to help the government ensure to all that all displaced people are able to return home voluntarily in safe and sustainable way or integrate into new settlement areas, including access, uh, accessing housing, land, livelihood, and opportunities in schools. Our humanitarian colleagues tell us that more than 8 million people in Ethiopia need food, shelter, medicine, and other emergency assistance. The Ethiopian Humanitarian Appeal Plan calls for $1.3 billion, but is only 51% funded. And also on the humanitarian front, in the Bahamas, uh, the government has registered approximately 4,800 evacuees in Nassau. 1,600 of these evacuees are in shelters and receiving assistance. The official death toll remains at 43, although the number of casualties is expected to increase as many people remain missing. The UN and humanitarian organizations continue to conduct missions on Abaco Islands and Grand Bahama to assess needs in support of national authorities while delivering assistance to various locations. As the situation remains fluid, regular assessments are required, and for now, our humanitarian colleagues say that water, sanitation, health, and food are priority in needs, as well as debris clearance on roads to increase access to the impacted areas. And we have um, an update on Libyan refugees, on refugees in Libya. Today, the UN Refugee Agency, the African Union, and the government of Rwanda have agreed to set up a mechanism to help evacuate some of them out of the country. The government of Rwanda will receive and provide protection to refugees and asylum seekers currently held in detention centers in Libya. The first to be evacuated are scheduled to be a group of 500 people, mostly from the Horn of Africa. This group will include children and youth at risk. Eva evacuation flights are expected to begin in the coming weeks. According to estimates, there are about 4,700 refugees held in dire conditions inside detention centers in Libya. 
After their arrival in Rwanda, the UN Refugee Agency will coordinate to look for longer-term solutions for the evacuees. As part of the agreement, the African Union will provide assistance with evacuation, strategic political support with training and coordination, and to help mobilize resources. UNHCR will provide protection services, necessary humanitarian assistance, including food, water, accommodation, education, and health care. The agency urges the international community to contribute resources to help implement the agreement. At 2.45 p.m. this afternoon, the three uh, African members of the Security Council, uh, which are? Perfect. They will, all three of them will speak to reporters, to you, that is, at the stakeout on the situation in Sudan. And today we thank our friends in El Salvador for paying the budget dues in full, which brings us up to the beautiful number of 118. I get to ask the first question. <laughs> Mr. Bayes, you were almost ready with the right answer, so go ahead. Uh, let's start then with um, election campaign in Israel as the backdrop but Prime Minister Netanyahu saying that he is going to annex settlements in parts of the West Bank and other strategic areas, he says, in the West Bank. Uh, what is the Secretary General's view of this? Um, what is his view of it in relation to uh, Security Council um, resolutions on this issue? And does he think this will be a contribution to peace efforts or detrimental to them? Uh, we've seen the statement made by uh, the Prime Minister. The Secretary General's position has always been clear and consistent. Unilateral actions are not helpful in the peace process. Our position today is unchanged and is reflected in relevant UN resolutions. Any uh, Israeli decision uh, to impose its laws, jurisdiction, and administration in the occupied uh, West Bank is without any international legal effect. Uh, I think such a, such a prospect would be devastating to the potential of reviving negotiations, regional peace, and the very essence of a two-state solution. And we do expect a more formal uh, statement uh, a bit later on this afternoon. All right, take the pen out of your mouth, turn on the microphone, and so, ask yes, a sir. question. Um, Thanks, Stefan. Um, this morning, a petition was launched criticizing the United Nations. It's over this event that your youth envoy mm -hmm. of ESG is co-hosting with the MISC Foundation, which is the private foundation of Saudi Crown Prince MBS. They say that, or the petition says, that the UN shouldn't really be getting involved uh, with, uh, with MBS, particularly as it comes so close to the first anniversary of the death of the journalist Jamal Khashoggi. What do you say to the people who signed that petition? Uh, I'll take a look at the petition. I haven't seen it. Uh, and let me take a look, and I will get back. To, back sure, back. sure. Can I do a couple more questions on that? What do you say in principle about the, um, uh, the partnership? Obviously, it's been controversial. It's been criticized by Human Rights Watch. It's been criticized by Freedom Forward. It's been criticized by Civicus. Um, I've asked you this question a few times before. You've kind of always dodged the, the question. But how about just a frank explanation? Why is the UN involved in this? Well, I think the. This program of, uh, of work signed uh, with the, um, by the Youth Envoy dates from a number of, uh, of years ago. Uh, on the separate issue of Mr. Kosoji, uh, I think the Secretary General, as I've said before, has always been very clear on his position on the need to uh, find uh, the culprits and people to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Mm. And how much money are you getting from the Miss Foundation? Uh, I'd have to check. Sure. Uh, One last question. Um, two of the key speakers have uh, um, pulled out. Can you confirm this? No. Uh, Mr. Klein and then Edie. Yes. Um, does the Secretary General support uh, calls, including by uh, apparently one prominent uh, international human rights organization, for schools not to uh, punish or try to prevent students from going on strike, I believe September 20th and September 27th, uh, in support of uh, a protest uh, to, to urge speedier action on climate change. Look, uh, the Secretary General, I think, is not only supportive of the enthusiasm that we have seen from young people all over the world. Uh, we've been in awe of the energy uh, and the creativity uh, youth groups all over the world have um, have shown when it comes to pushing 
those in power and those who are a bit older to actually uh, get on board in dealing with uh, climate change. And but you can I'm sorry. But, but, okay. but, no, I, let's let's hold on on the butts. Uh, he continues to support uh, their their enthusiasm. The Secretary General also thinks that getting an education is critically important. Okay, but uh, I won't use the word but. However, however, <laughs> comma, yeah, comma. Uh, how would you reconcile the, the, the two? I mean, I, I understand he's, he he supports I think it's the enthusiasm, a, it's, it's, a, but it's up it's up to each. But sorry, there are some speak. organizations, mm -hmm. and uh, one one in particular, who I'm not going to name at this point because they don't want to be identified until tomorrow, but uh, that are literally urging uh, schools not to take any action to prevent these walkouts and strikes. So where does the Secretary General, I mean, does he support those kinds of displays of enthusiasm? I, I think this? I've uh, answered your question to the best of my ability in showing support for the enthusiasm of these young people, which should be an example to us all. Uh, a lot of those decisions uh, of what you refer to will have to be taken on uh, case-by-case basis, and individuals will have to c take their own decisions. Ms. Lederer. Um, does the Secretary General have any comment on the latest North Korean um, launch of projectiles and since we've all just heard about a uh, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., John Bolton, being fired uh, by President Trump, I wonder whether the Secretary General has any comment on it's, that. It's not for us to, to comment on, on, the, on the decision taken by the President. I can tell you that the Secretary General... Uh, has always had very good relations with uh, with Ambassador Bolton. Uh, when he was High Commissioner for, for Refugees, uh, they saw each other a number of times. And uh, most recently, during his uh, tenure as National Security Advisor and, the Secret and Antonio Guterres' tenure as a Secretary General, they had a number of meetings which were always very pleasant and very productive. Um, you know, we have in the past and continue to express our concern about the continued launches uh, by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea uh, of various ballistic missiles. Uh, the Secretary General very much hopes that there will be a swift resumption of the working level talks between the U.S. and the DPRK, as agreed by the two leaders in June, as well as a resumption of the talk of the inter-Korean dialogue. Let's go to the back. Uh, yeah, I want to go back to the uh, deal with R Rwanda. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who made the deal with the UN Refugee Agency to repatriate? It's, repatriate? It, it's a trilateral dis, uh, agreement between the UN Refugee Agency, the African Union, uh, and the Republic of Rwanda. And is there a cash injection to the UN Refugee Agency for well, this I think uh, we're, action? We're trying to get uh, is some funding for the for the operation i mean I, we can get more details from unhcr i think what's critically important is that as we've seen uh in the past weeks and months is the situation for refugees and migrant uh, is clearly untenable uh in libya uh with the breakdown of that we've seen in security in in tripoli the the attacks targeted or not uh, i don't know of of migrant and refugee centers it's not a safe place uh, these are people who really have no one looking out for them. And so I think with this, uh, we hope to get a number of them out to safer places. But, but who instigated it? Uh, I would have to check. I mean, it's an ongoing discussion between those three entities. Madame. Uh, Stefan, on Israel and Palestine, Mr. Mladenov uh, um, and his comment on killing of two Palestinians in uh, Gaza by Israeli uh, forces, he... I, I urge the army not to use any, uh, the Israeli army not to use um, uh, any, um, to use force only uh, as uh, the last uh, resort. So my question to you is, do you condemn the killing of Palestinian civilians uh, by Israeli army? Well, I, I think Mr. Mladenov's tweet speaks for itself and speaks for the Secretary uh, General. We've been very clear uh, on condemning the killings of civilians. Um, I have another question on mm -hmm. Mr. Mladenov's tweet regarding Mr. Greenblatt 
so after the resignation of Mr. Greenblatt, Mr. Mladenov uh, described him as um, a thoughtful engagement of uh, commitment to peace. So Mr. Greenblatt was pretty much involved in the process of moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So can you comment on such uh, a tweet or such a comment from Mr. Mladenov? Uh, I, I'm not going to... No, no, I, I'm not going to, you know, I, I'm not going to do running commentary on a senior official's Twitter feed, but what... what that's a, uh, that's I, a comment. But that's having, a having, having said that, I will say something. Um, you know, Mr. Mladenov, I'm sure, was coming from a point of having, you know, he's dealt with Mr. Greenblatt, uh, and he was expressing some sentiments uh, regarding uh, his dealings with Mr. Greenblatt and Mr. Greenblatt's involvement in uh, the, the plan uh, that is coming from the Trump administration. The secretary, the UN's and Mr. Mladenov's position uh, on the moving of the, of the embassy was uh, of from U.S. from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, was made at the time and remains unchanged. Yes, sir, Mian. You know, there is a report by the Secretary General on peace and security in Afghanistan. And in the same neighborhood, there is a rising tension between India and Pakistan over Kashmir, which has been under the UN resolutions. Does Secretary General plan to do something about it, or is, does he plan, because both, both the prime ministers will be here at the UNGA, mm -hmm. so does he plan anything to mediate on the, on the sidelines of the UNGA? Right. You know, the, the, the posi our position on mediation has, is on, on, as a matter of principle has always remained the same. Uh, the, Secretary General, the Secretary General has had contacts both with the government of Pakistan and the, uh, the, the government of India. He saw the Prime Minister of India at the sidelines of the G7 not long ago. Um, he had spoken to the Foreign Minister of Pakistan yesterday. At her request, he met with the permanent representative of Pakistan in his office. His message to all of them has been the same, both publicly and privately, that he remains very concerned about uh, any potential escalation between India and uh, Pakistan over the situation. He appeals to both sides to deal with the issue through dialogue. And as was said by the High Commissioner for Human Rights recently, the situation in Kashmir can only be solved within the full respect of human rights. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stefan. My question on Ukraine, which is not surprising, I guess, for you. Uh, so you've been making a statement on Sunday, uh, which we really welcome, very good statement about the prisoners' ex exchange and the peace process in Ukraine, and you've made some statement yesterday, which is also very good. There, there was uh, also development on Sunday when Russia held uh, uh, local elections mm -hmm. throughout Russia and also in Crimea. Uh, taking into account that Crimea is considered an occupied territory by GA resolutions, by other documents, mm -hmm. Uh, I wonder what's, what's the view of the Secretary General on this, and especially taking, taking into account the, this peace process that, that you've been talking about, and that the, you said the Secretary General will be pushing the sides. Mm -hmm. How does he view this event? Sure. I, uh, so our statement on, on the peace process, as we said yesterday, is, remains unchanged. Uh, we do not have a mandate to comment uh, on the elections that that took place, uh, so we generally do not comment without a mandate. But with regards to the situation in Crimea specifically, our position, uh, Secretary General's position, is consistent and in line with the relevant uh, General Assembly resolutions, not notably on the territorial integrity of the Ukraine, which was passed in the 68th session, and more recently during the 73rd session, on the uh, situation of human rights in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the uh, city of Sevastopol in Ukraine, which is the name of the resolution, uh, in which the Assembly reaffirmed the territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. Just a little, little small follow-up. Uh, in the view of the UN Charter, does, mm -hmm. the, does the Secretary General think that these elections are kind of violating this, this UN or Charter? As I said, we, we don't have a comment because uh, we don't have a mandate uh, to comment on these elections. The Secretary General's view is very clear, uh, and it is in, in line with the General Assembly resolution that talks about the territorial integrity of Ukraine. Linda, and then Mr. Bayes. Thank you, Steph. 
<clears throat> I was wondering um, what the latest um, developments, so to speak, are regarding the um, French initiative to hold talks in regard to helping to resolve the Ukrainian-Russian crisis. Uh, is there any kind of UN involvement expected? And would you have any uh, response to, it seems that President Trump has just offered to join in that, that uh, attempt. Uh, I haven't seen those comments by the president, so I won't comment. Uh, we've seen the reports of the Nor of, uh, possible meeting of the Normandy format involving uh, France, Russia, Ukraine, and Germany. We very much hope uh, that those will take place, that they will be uh, productive, and we remain supportive of that process, as well as the Minsk agreements and the, ver and the OACE uh, mandates on Ukraine. Mr. Bayes and Mr. Klein. Security Council meeting today on Afghanistan. You said you were going to try and seek a stakeout with SRSG Yamamoto. What is the news on that? That is the fact that I tried is the truth. The fact that I failed is also Why the truth. Why did you fail? Why did he? I, I don't know. He said they would not be able to. to Do you speak not? Up. I mean, just a follow up because this is. A, I, mean, I, I mean, no, no. But this is a yeah. sort of continuous issue. Some UN officials visit this building very rarely. Mm -hmm. He's one of them. Yet it's an absolutely pivotal time of for Afghanistan. Very high high violence. The p Taliban peace talks uh, called off, and elections just in weeks. He hasn't done a stakeout here for 14 months. Surely, in his job, he has an obligation not just to make statements, but to take questions from us, the representatives of the public. I will. Uh, I hear you, and I will pass that on, Mr. Klein. Just want to go. I just want to go back to Kashmir for a moment. Uh, you said that the Secretary General has had private and uh, discussions with representatives of both sides and uh, mm -hmm. has made public statements. But would he contemplate, if accepted by both sides, getting more actively involved in mediation or what he would call preventive diplomacy, uh, sort of on the scale that he tried to do with Cyprus? I mean, would he, and, and the opportunity coming. Uh, during uh, GA week uh, to perhaps uh, try to bring the sides together under his auspices, his personal auspices, to see if, if, if he can lower the tensions. I, I think we, we addressed, uh, we've addressed that issue in the past, uh, and our position has remained unchanged. Madame, and then all the way in the back. Um, on Yemen, I... Um, I didn't really understand the statement yesterday, you know, also after the <laughs> email we got from you. Yeah. So could you... <laughs> You're asking me to literally do the impossible. Exactly. Uh, and also yeah. give us more, uh, if possible, where things stand in regarding the Hudaydah agreement. Or I, I will try point. to reinterpret the uh, UN English into... I don't want to say the Queen's English because I would not dare. But um, uh, first of all, as a clarification, the uh, coordination center is on the boat, uh, I think, as we clarified yesterday. Um, I, the, the big movement yesterday was to, cr to have in one place uh, representatives of both sides and the UN in a way where they could address uh, issues that come up uh, in, in real time. And that is, uh, for us, that is very much a step forward. Yes, uh, just a follow-up to my colleague's question, and that is again back to South Asia. Does uh, UNSG plan to reduce the tensions and make some kind of effort of making both the Prime Minister meet on the sideline of the UNGA in September? I really what nothing, was the I outcome? Have, I have nothing to add to what I've already said on the situation in Kashmir come of Pakistan's uh, ambassador meeting the that I, I addressed that outcome in your first uh, question. Thank you all, Monica. All yours. See you mañana.